we are looking at this site, vulnerability scanner. Vulnerability scanning, the vulnerability scanning website. And they actually have a test site. This is the test and demo site for the site you just saw, made specifically for testing web attacks and scanning for vulnerabilities. So let's see what vulnerabilities this website has, which my guess is gonna be a lot. Now for this, we are using something called BWASP, the B-O-B, -B, Bob, what's your name, B-O-B, -B, so they call you Bob, Web Application Security Project, BWASP, is an open source analysis tool to support web vulnerability manual analysis hackers. The BWASP project supports find attack vector automatically, e.g. SQL injection, cross-site scripting, detect website technology, log 4J vulnerability scan, HTTP REST HPI, and test payload option, attack test. So I actually stumbled upon this. I was looking up BWASP because I used something called BWASP in 2021. It was not what I'm about to show you. BWASP back then was like, just like a purposely vulnerable website for testing. And I looked up BWASP and I just stumbled upon this. It's just automated vulnerability scanning, which it was pretty cool. So I was like, why not just go over it? And shout out to the contributors these dudes, and maybe gals. And apparently, this work was supported by Korea Information Technology Research Institute. And best of the best program. So shout out, best of the best Bob program. And I looked at their Twitter, and they only have two followers. And their last post was in 2022. So not well known. So I have some written out instructions for you to set this up. I couldn't find any tutorials out there, so I guess this is the first one, but I don't want to risk setting it up again because it took me forever because I had to like downgrade stuff, which you'll see in a second. But you're going to clone the repository, which I have right here, desktop, BWASP, uh, just get clone. Then you're going to create a virtual environment, V-E-N-V, -E and you're going to activate it on line 11. That's what this is here, V-E-N-V, -E virtual environment. This just basically creates a virtual environment inside your Linux box. It's kind of like Docker, but way less cool and complex. It's just like a virtual environment, so you can do stuff in there, and then it won't affect the base system, because we have to downgrade stuff, and you don't want to downgrade stuff on your base Linux system. Unless you do, I won't tell you what to do. So you have your virtual environment activated, you're in it. Then you're gonna install all the dependencies right here, line 15, install all these bad boys, pretty self-explanatory. Then you're gonna change directories into the virtual environment, bin directory. And then you're going to use this link for this Chrome driver version of Chrome driver that you need is 136.0.7103.113. And if you have an update Linux box, your driver is going to be higher than that. So you need the virtual environment to downgrade the Chrome driver. And then just a little chmod, chmod, however you pronounce it, to make it executable, plus x, Chrome driver. Then you're going to go into the crawling directory desktop, BWASP, crawling, and then you're gonna nano scouter.py. So this is where the Chrome driver downgrade kind of comes into play. You're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. You're gonna copy and paste this code where it says Chrome driver path. Just literally delete all of that and just copy and paste import OS, this new Chrome driver path. And it's going to like map to your virtual environment and to that Chrome driver instead of your system Chrome driver, because we are doing all of this in a virtual environment. And make sure you put it under init selenium. I don't know how to pronounce that, but make sure you just align everything under here because Python in this scenario is very picky and I had to indent a bunch of times and then retry and it was a long process. So 
So just align everything under there, return driver, indent, everything all proper, and then you're good to go. So you've edited the scouter.py, and then from the uh, BWASP home directory, just run python3 web slash app.py, and it will run the uh, web application that you are about to see. So now that we got setting it up out of the way, which took me a hot minute, now it's time to get into the vulnerability scanning. So for this website, we're going to copy the URL, the test site, and this is the automatic URL. You're going to do test PHP. And before we go any further, disclaimer, this is all done in a contained lab. No actual websites were used. This is all legal. This is all ethical. This is for educational purposes only. Don't do this on websites you don't have permission to do it on. Thank you. Back to the regularly scheduled programming. And this is on the automated analysis option. So you have automated and manual. Just click automated and then it'll bring you to here. So we have the target URL. Proceed. And it brings you to a known information. So anything you already know about the website, you can just click, for example, like it's running off of PHP Fusion, things like that, PHP Nuke, OpenCMS. And then it has the known frameworks, such as JavaScript frameworks. Anything that you know about the website, you can check the box. And then web, a little cake PHP, a little catberry.js, Google Web Toolkit, uh, just things that you already know. Then you can go through some libraries. WordPress, themes, plugins, programming languages, operating systems, databases, things like that. So click what you know. I'm going to not click anything for the fun of it. Proceed. Then you have analysis recursive level and maximum processes. I'm just going to leave it as is because why mess with it? Then we have the optional options, port scan, known ports, evaluate CSP and test payloads. And the Google search API used to analyze for OWASP based analysis, which I'm not going to put anything in there. And for test payloads, you can enable it, but you must disable risk lock before you select the option. Right now it's in safe mode, so I'm not going to test any payloads. So you click proceed and we have the target URL, option information, things like that. So you just click submit. And it has brought us to the dashboard. As you can see, our target and stuff is starting to populate in here. You received 20 packets, detected 12 threats, discovered zero ports, and estimated 1,314 CVEs, which the CVEs are over here. And I think there's supposed to be little icon images here for the environments, which who knows? Um, in the GitHub, there were images here. I think this is kind of based off of uh, Wobbleizer, however you say it. That's at least what I'm getting. Anyway, environments, web environments, programming languages, Adobe Flash, PHP, and it says the version of PHP, 5.6.4.0, Dreamweaver, web services, Nginx, 1.19.0, and Ubuntu. Shout out to Ubuntu. Ports, zero, I think because I didn't do port scanning. And then on the side here, we have the report for the attack vectors for this website, which they're all here. So the attack vectors, you have the URL, the base URL, guestbook.php, categories.php, index.php. We have login.php down here, which is a high impact up here. So we have the URL, action, parameters, threat, method, impact. So lots of these are vulnerable to SQL injection and cross-site scripting. Lots of SQL injection, cross-site scripting stuff going on. So let's click on login. So the detailed view, impact high, threat, SQL injection, cross-site scripting. The URL, it tested. And the actions, post requests for some test queries. And the vector data, you can see the tags, the violation. Apparently robots.txt is not set. An error page not set. The referred documents. Uh, blind SQL I injection, payload box, uh, SQL I cheat sheet, lots of payload box, 
predictable vulnerabilities, SQL injection, value account, cross-site scripting account, HTTP only, and X frame options. Has this comment. Code outside HTML is locked equals false and nothing for OSINT. And then the response data. So obviously this is vulnerable to SQL injection. Look at it anyway. So let's try that again. Let's try it with safe mode off because I want to know what that does when it tests the payloads. I haven't tried that one yet. Do at your own risk. By unlocking this protection option, you'll be able to access a few more features. But these options can undermine the availability of the target service and you will agree that all parties, including you, are responsible for this. We'll try it. It's a test site. Risk protection disabled. Let's evaluate CSP2 and let's do the port scan. You know, let's turn on, let's turn on everything. Let's see. Hopefully it doesn't DDoS it. I will be sad. Anyway, submit. Let's see. I'm scared. Packets are coming in relatively slowly. I think it's fine. I think it's done. We have the port, one port, HTTP, the one open port. CSP, nothing. Same amount of CVEs. Go to the attack vectors. See if anything's different here. Login. It looks like the same stuff, I guess. And the site is still up, so we did not uh, DDoS it. Thank God. So it seems like that didn't do much. Login.php, fine guestbook.php, just robot.txt not set. So this is question mark, manual. Click URL to check all payloads. Okay, URL, wait, dismiss. What URL? Hold on, click URL to test all payloads. Click payload detail to view related packets. I guess this is just the payload details. I don't know, I've never used it before. Cause right here in the instructions, it says cookies. Oh. I see. I logged into the test account. On this page, you can visualize or edit the user information. Some JavaScript. To get the cookies, I would have to interrupt the session and do the whole proxy. And I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> so apparently you can see the cookies from the session, which you could also see in Burp Suite. Um, so I guess it's like a GUI uh, Wappalizer in Burp Suite, except less extensive than Burp Suite. And apparently they also have a Chrome extension that looks like this and you can use a repeater. So what I've gathered from this is it's like Burp Suite, but gooey, but not as good. I guess if you wanted like a little intro to it, you could do it. But honestly, just the process of setting up the whole thing was rough. And Burp Suite is just easier in my opinion. It's easier to set up. You, there's definitely a learning curve because of Burp Suite, but I would use Burp Suite over this personally, but it's still cool. Anyway, hope you guys got something out of that. Make sure to like, subscribe, punch all the buttons in the face, and I'll see you at DEF CON. The day I post this, it'll be the day before DEF CON. So see you guys there, I guess. Come up, say hi. I'll be at a noob village sometime. So hope to see you guys there. Anyway, subscribe and I'll see you at DEF CON and in the next video.